Island, the world's greatest fun frolic, with its beach miles long, all peppered with people, the place where merriment is king. Let's mingle with one million folks, folks who are just like all of us, 100,000 youngsters and oldsters, all swimming, playing, or resting, all getting their share of the sun and the fun. Nathan Handwerker, who established this institution on this spot in 1916. His wife, Ida Handwerker. Hey, that looks fine. Founders and continuers of the National Institution, Nathan's Famous Incorporated. Nathan's hot dogs have been served to, you know, kings and queens. President Roosevelt ordered Nathan's hot dogs to be shipped to Yalta so he could present them to Stalin and Churchill. You know, Walter Matthau, in his last will and testament, stipulated that at his funeral he wanted Nathan's hot dogs to be served. And, and they were. In every part of the world, Nathan's is Nathan's. McDonald's is McDonald's. Whatever food it is, it's the exact same. It's consistent in every place. Nathan's, the greatest taste in Franks in New York for over 60 years, introduces a tender, juicy, skinless beef frank that snaps with flavor. Legend has it that even as early as 1916, there was some kind of sponsored food competition. This all started when Jim Mullen, an Irish immigrant in 1916, said whoever can eat the most hot dogs, that's the most American. And three of them had a contest and Mullen won with 13. It was just kind of a novelty, local, not dissimilar to what food competitions were throughout the century, just kind of on the county fair level, not really expecting it to become not just national, but the international phenomenon that it has become. Once George Shea took it over, that's when it became kind of this blockbuster event. competitive eating fan recognizes Takeru Kobayashi. I may have to come out of retirement to challenge this punk for America. Oh, Japanese guy, aren't you full yet? As the great Kobayashi says, Detekuro Toki Itayo. What does that mean? That's gonna hurt coming out. It's been a competition for a longer time than folks have really been aware of it, but it didn't really meet the big time probably until Kobayashi comes along. Three-time defending champ Takiro Kobayashi hoping to swallow the competition again at this year's Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest. He started off strong eating 17 in the first three minutes. 51 dogs. Kobayashi may indeed do that. 36 seconds left. Kobayashi's up to 52. A new world record. Unbelievable. Never in the 89-year history of this contest have we seen that many hot dogs in 12 minutes. You will never forget where you were when right. you broke that record. Three, two, one. The story here today for me, though, is this man right here, Joey Chestnut. 27 dogs for this rookie out of San Jose. Chestnut might be the best rookie we've ever seen. This kid's got a future. Kobayashi with 50 seconds to go is going to break his record. Chestnut's in trouble. 48 for Kobayashi. This is the official stare down. One, two, three, go! Glare. Glaring! Anger. Whoa! Yeah. There they are, the champions. They will square off tomorrow at 1240. You guys need anything else? Want another version of that? Down again. And they are underway right in the center of that line will be Kobayashi. Joey Chestnut doing everything he can to shovel it down. 
The crowd is going crazy here. They want to try to bring the belt back to America. Can Chestnut pull it out in the last quarter of a minute? I don't know. And Kobayashi takes it again. Unbelievable. But Joey Chestnut gave him an amazing fight. Kobayashi pulls even with Chestnut. Less than half a dog difference between Chestnut and Kobayashi now. Will the belt stay in America or will it go back to Japan? We got a photo finish. Unbelievable valor from that man right there, Joey Chestnut. Ladies and gentlemen, in second place, Takeru Kobayashi. In first place, with 66 hot dogs and buns, Joey Chestnut! Chestnut has done it! He may indeed have changed the course of this nation, righted the course <laughs> of our nation. Chestnut is a true American hero. The mustard belt is back in America. Joey, to win this competition in your home nation, how does it make you feel to hold up that flag? Oh, it feels great. Uh, this uh, house been held by Kobe Oshie for six years. It's about time it comes back to America on the 4th of July. What's your next uh, plan to eat another hot dog? If I need to eat another one right now, I could. <laughs>
I know it's harder on the other eaters than it is me. Hey, could you imagine eating against that, knowing that the 30,000 people there are for me? Backstage, I'll tell the other eaters. Everybody knows how this is going to end. Everybody. I already called my mom and told her I won. One way or another, I'm walking away with that belt. On July 4th, the day of our country's birth, what better way to celebrate America than to overeat too many Nathan's hot dogs? All Peters on the bus. Let's go, guys. Time to eat your dogs. We were friends throughout the year, but this is the biggest one of the year. It's our Super Bowl, our WrestleMania, if you may. There's no playing around right now. None of that. I want to take Joey and Stoney's throats and crush them. But that, I can't do that. I'll go to jail. And that's just wrong and inhumane. But, like, figuratively. Joey and Stoney are the number one and two fellows in the company. But I have to worry about everyone else, because if you sleep on one, then you're obviously going to get beat. Because we have some of the best in the world competing today. Except that guy. I'm Joey Chestnut, world champion, you better beat her. Getting ready to defend my title. Going for number nine. In the meantime, I want you to ingest mass quantity of the Sports Center, starting now. Joey Jaws Chestnut. I've seen the rise of a man who ate 21 and a half hot dogs and buns at a movie theater in Northern California to arrive at Nathan's. There is no one who can reach the Joey Jaws Chestnut level. For those 10 minutes, he knows his entire yearly salary is based on what he puts in his stomach. He is unstoppable on July 4th. <laughs> I'm Joey Chestnut, world champion competitive eater, getting ready to go for my ninth straight title. That's right. That's right. That's right. I need you to consume mass quality as a sports center. By the end of today, in a mere six hours, he will be the nine-time champion. I'm Joey Chestnut, world champion competitor, getting ready to defend my title. What do you think? I'd probably say last year, maybe the year before that, I've had the mentality of like, I might be able to beat Joey, the champion who's had this eight years in a row going for nine. But I gotta keep focused on what I'm doing and also keep my eye on Joey so I know exactly where he is, keeping dog to dog with him. I'm Joey Chestnut, world champion, competitive eater. Guys, guys, move No, I'm super pumped to uh, compete here for the fifth time and uh, hopefully dethrone Chestnut. Everybody on the bus, let's go, guys. Yeah. You know. I'm Joey Chestnut, world champion competitive eater. Getting it, getting it. Ah. We're moving to the start of the 2015 Nathan's Famous Hot Dog Contest. It is now time for George Say to bring the eaters onto the platform and for the program to begin. Are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen, number 24 in the world. He's eaten 34 ears of sweet corn, six feet nine inches tall. Let's hear it for Gideon O.J. He struggles to understand the nuances of our culture. The difference, for example, between a butt dial and a booty call. You get a lot of groupies from this? Maybe. Yeah. I mean, I am the best looking one in the group. I mean, come on. Ranked number 10 in the world. Let me hear it for Paul Rodriguez. It's, it's going to come with the territory. I've also hooked up with some of the females, and I'm not going to name names. So I'm just saying. He is the lumberjack breakfast, French cut string bean eating champion of the world. He was buried alive under 60 cubic feet of popcorn and he ate his way out to survival, which is why he's ranked number 19 in the world by Major League Eating. I believe the founding fathers, and rumor has it Ben Franklin was able to put away four or five cheesesteaks in a sitting, they wanted our freedoms to be celebrated. Right to have guns, right to freedom of speech, freedom of eating, and that's what it is today. Ladies and gentlemen, the matzo ball and green bean and donut eating champion of the world. Are you ready? He is the popcorn.
agitator extraordinaire, the one who eats to the beef with the flash affair. He's out of house of home, no thought or care, fridge empty, cupboard spare. Bad lads, Booker! <laughs> the number two eater in the world. Right behind his arch rival, Joey Chestnut. A man who he has beaten many times. The bacon and birthday cake and frozen yogurt and gyro and Twinkie and slug burger and pumpkin pie eating champion of the world. 56 hot dogs and buns in 10 minutes. Many believe he is the future of the sport. Matthew You know what this means? In a world of nothing, there will still be a monument to our existence. Bleached by the sun, perhaps, and blunted by time, but everlasting. Because this man represents all that is eternal in the human experience. I've seen the rise of many eaters who were number one, who thought they'd be number one forever, and then they were number two. I believe Joey, Jaws Chestnut, will be the first eater to ever retire at number one. I, am, I will bank lunch on that, and that's not an easy bet to bank. Through the curtain of the Aurora, a comet blazes to herald his arrival. And his victories shall be transcribed into every language known to history, including Klingon. Number one eater in the world, I give you America itself, Joey Justa! is on her way. Joey Chestnut, Matt Stoney, they are the key to this competition. Last year, Joey Chestnut and Matt Stoney were about 10 hot dogs and buns off. It is running neck and neck, Stoney and Chestnut. Nobody else is in this game. I expect Matt Stoney to close that gap. Joey's numbers have been coming down while Stoney's have been going up. I expect to see Matt Stoney push Joey to his limits. Chestnut is three behind. Paul, I think this kid is going to do it. This would be a huge upset. Youth is speaking in Coney Island today. We have under 10 seconds to go. They count down. Now five seconds. What's in the mouth counts. And it appears that Matt Stoney is our new champion. Ladies and gentlemen, The 2015 Nathan's Famous Fourth of July Champion of the World, Matthew Stoner! Amazing moment. No one thought it could happen when Joey Chestnut beat Kobayashi and then beat him again and then beat him again. No one thought anyone could beat the great Joey Chestnut, the number one ranked eater in the world. Incredible, ladies and gentlemen, the champion of the world! Like major league eating history. I mean, this is something that people are going to be talking about for decades. If I could be like someone, to be like Matt Story, like I think he's amazing. I was cheering for him, like I was screaming, like "Go, Matt! You know you can do this!" Everyone else is screaming, Joey, and I was like, "No, Matt, you can do this!" And like these girls next to me were giving me dirty looks. And then when Matt won, I was almost crying. Like it was just amazing. This year it was different. About maybe a three, four minutes, I pulled ahead of him, which was a little strange for me. I noticed like he might be off his game a little bit. So I got a little confident and I was like, I'm two hot dogs ahead. I'm feeling kind of crappy right now, but I just can't give up. You know, this is Nathan, this is a big contest. You're never gonna let yourself go if you give up now. Pseudo 33, Thomas 29, as we approach the final minute of competition. I believe uh, competitive is the part of sports because so you competing with others. As of today, I always went the first place, but I lost second. And there it is for Mickey Sudo, 37 dogs to Sonia Thomas's 34. And the mental, physically, 
You have to be ready. In second place, the great Sonia Thomas, ladies and gentlemen. One thing about Joey Jaws Chestnut is he needs a competitor. He needs somebody who will drive him the next height. He has a long intestinal road against him. Does Chestnut fear Stoney? I think I think now he, he might he might have to fear him. George Shea is still something of an enigma, but I think he represents the classic American showman. You know, the, 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 the carnival leader, the circus guy. You don't have these kinds of entertainers anymore in America today. It's kind of a throwback, and he's embraced that brand really, really well. They say that competitive eating is the battleground upon which God and Lucifer wage war for men's souls, my friends. George Shea kind of was like a PR intern, or had started in advertising or, or public relations. I mean, he's not only a bona fide entertainer, but I mean, he's helped negotiate very lucrative television deals. Welcome back to the Glutton Bowl. I'm Mark Thompson with me in the booth tonight, the chairman of the International Federation of Competitive Eating, George Shea. This championship, which is sanctioned by the International Federation of Competitive Eating, better known as the IFOCE. He knows all the eaters, all their stats. He has full media control of his enterprise. Head of the International Federation of Competitive Eating, George Shea. With his media savvy, evangelical zeal, he's taken competitive eating to a global audience. We have a goal. We believe that this is the most beautiful sport now being practiced, and our goal is to bring this throughout the world and to bring it to the Olympics. Competitive eating is actually more akin to the original sports of the original Olympics, the running, the jumping, the wrestling, the fighting, the throwing, the eating, you see, rather than, you know, do you know mini golf? Miniature golf is a trial sport in the Olympics, I believe. Miniature golf. And yet they turn up their nose at competitive eating. The four horsemen of the esophagus are here for you today! When people ask me what my husband does, it's kind of a little odd. They know the Nathan's contest and they're usually familiar with Takiro Kobayashi, the Japanese guy who wins every year. And uh, so I sort of say, well, he does the PR for that and he's the MC. And uh, they're always kind of really relieved that he's not one of the eaters in the contest. It's just odd. It's an odd thing to do for a living, I think. Yeah, Crazy Legs, it's George Shea. Tomorrow's thing with GMA has been moved to 9 a.m. I would say he is of kind of obsessed. Uh, he loves it, he's passionate so about it, and uh, he loves being the center of attention. Nine. He's a brilliant PR man, and I think there's plenty of other, you know, things he could be promoting. I'll be there. I'm breaking his heart saying this, but competitive eating to me is not really a sport. It's a bunch of guys eating, you know? It's not like, you know, I, I don't see the athleticism in competitive eating. Takeru Kobayashi is Japan's king of conspicuous consumption. Can you go into the conflict that Kobayashi had with George Shea and MLE in terms of licensing? Sure. Um, so, conflict that Kobayashi has with MLE. It turns out you can't actually make a whole lot of money as a competitive eater unless you are at the very top of your game. How much were you making like in revenue on average? I think some years I made like 15, 20 grand. Maybe one year I made 35. I mean, I think a few of the guys made uh, like 75 grand on like some TV show. <laughs> You're like, how come I didn't get that TV show? I would have loved to do that, you know? At a recent competition in New York, he devoured 50 and a half hot dogs in just 12 minutes, setting a world record and leaving much bigger competitors wallowing in his wake. Kobayashi had a lot of star power and he had some offers in terms of doing endorsement deals. Two hot dogs, please. There are some things money can't buy. For the quick snack, there's MasterCard PayPass. Major League Eating gave Kobayashi a platform to get this celebrity. So Major League Eating wanted a cut of his endorsement money. And Kobayashi basically said, I don't want to give you a cut of my endorsement money. I am putting you on the map. Without me, there is no Major League Eating. Emily, uh, never allow me. 
to compete in the contest. You gotta, uh, it never happens. So Major League Eating basically said, okay, if you're not going to play ball with us on sponsorships and giving us a cut of this money, then you're not going to be a Major League Eating. I think they squeezed Kobayashi out personally. I don't think it was the way they needed to go down. And that's why you see Kobayashi do these sort of side events consistently to help pay the bills. That's why he has that weird Terminix deal where he's trying to eat things to be like a termite. 857 tater tots over the course of three hours and 22 minutes. New world record. For humans. The official all-day eating title still belongs to termites. Termites! And that's why he has on July 4th, you know, Kobayashi eating Kobe dogs at some obscure bar somewhere. Unfortunately, for better or for worse, I mean, he is one of the best known competitive eaters. He's not allowed in Major League Eating, and it does a disservice to both of them. He's not making as much money as he could if he were in Major League Eating. Major League Eating isn't as important of a sport, isn't as well known of a sport, because they don't have a viable challenger and haven't for years. Matt Stoney came up and beat uh, Joey Chestnut, but Kobayashi really was the only legitimate challenger when you're talking about two athletes at their peak. Five! Four, three, two, one, begin! George Shea specifically has a very total and universal um, control over his brand in a very interesting way. Tokyo, are you ready? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, let's go! Go, Joey, go! Joey tests out the world record holder with 384 daily foods gyoza on this stage last year. That's one minute gone, ladies and gentlemen. Chestnut and Stoney already have 50 gyoza down. Go, go, go! Go, go, go! I'm going to try to get a talent on Chestnut and Stoney. They are already 125 plus. We are well ahead, well ahead of world record pace. Little Tokyo, do you want to see a record? With 178, it's Mickey Sudo, the number one ranked female leader in the world. Mickey Sudo, you came third last year with a heroic performance of 199. How do you think you went here today, champ? I don't think I came near that number, but I'm still proud of my performance. You know, I've had kind of a rough week leading up to this event. Um, just a lot of life hiccups. And uh, so I felt really underprepared and under practice coming to this. I'm happy with how I did today. I'm happy how I did today, and that's all you can ask for. I was uh, kind of disheartened when I saw my final number because it's lower than last year, but like, there's no way I was touching Joey or Stoney. You know, like they're in a league of their own. So I held it down third place three years in a row. It's like when your parents say, as long as you did your best. We all know that in the United States of America, that is a complete lie. Because if your best is second best, you're still a loser. This night, exactly, God bless the United States of America. This nation is a meritocracy, and if you do your best, but it's not enough, get out of my way, because it just don't count. It's a nation of winners and the rest, and that's how it has been and how it always shall be. And let's cut the music right there. I want Chestnut and I want Stony. I want you to report to the front of the stage. Each and every battle between Chestnut and Stony 
is a battle between one and two, it is a battle between age and youth, it is a battle between experience and vigour. One of these men ate 339 daily foods gyoza in just 10 minutes. The other ate 343. I'm not going to shut up. We say these eaters are ranked number one and two in the world, but the honest truth is it's 1A and 1B. Because they tower above all of us. But there can be just one champion in first place with 343 daily food gyoza in 10 minutes. Matthew, the mega Obviously, I'm pretty full right now, but uh, you know, the win uh, makes it feel a lot better. You know, I just came out here prepared, focused, and just pushed as hard as I could. Joey, he's an amazing competitor, and uh, we're always really close together, so no contest is given to me. I gotta work my hardest. And cheers for Chestnut with 339! I, I need to figure out what, why I'm slow. I need to be healthier, I think. I need, I need to run more, make sure that I can control my breathing a little better during the contest. I'm not nauseous and I'm not cold. I'm winded. I'm fat and I need to I need to get healthy. It is the most important sporting trophy in the history of mankind. Matt Stoney also gets two grand. But it's not like Matt Stoney's breaking my records. He didn't break a record today. He didn't break it on the Fourth of July. He's not changing the game. He's, he's just he's just got me. I'm having a bad bad run, and uh, and I'm 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 gonna snap out of it eventually, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna kill it. I just need to find myself, get back to what I can do. And once I do that, I'll, I'll be winning. Ladies and gentlemen, remember what you have just seen. Matt's a hardballer. He's he's driven, and you know, that little kid, he's got a lot of fight in him. I like him. I think he's a sweet kid. Um, and I don't care who you are, eventually you get tired of what you're doing. And he just, he wanted it more. So, I mean, rightfully so. If you work hard enough, I guess you're going you're gonna to take it. But I think everybody expected this to happen. Joey's an awesome guy. He had a hard and rough year last year with a bunch of personal stuff. But, I, you know, you can't win all the time. I don't care who you are. But nobody likes to lose. Nobody likes to be dethroned. I mean, I wouldn't like it either. That's it. Four minutes and 13 seconds. I think he's gonna come back with a vengeance. He's gonna try to retake his title. It's on him to get better. As with me, if I wanna get better, I gotta do it myself. There's not anybody who's gonna hold my hand. I guess, honestly, taking second isn't bad either. I mean, not to say that taking first isn't great, but if I was him and still taking consistent seconds, I'd still keep doing it. I mean, that's great money. I, I, I'd feel no shame in that. Well, I bow to your eating prowess. Ah, that was really good, actually. <laughs> Can I have another one? <laughs> well, she's the woman who ate the most tacos at the Chronic Taco Competition. 53 tacos. Please welcome Stephanie to the show. <laughs> welcome. You ate 53 tacos in how long? It just took, you know, 10 minutes. That's it. <laughs> uh, it's just a snack. So if you look at... These balloons, let's pretend these represent the human stomach. An average human, about two fists. That's a liter. Stephanie, you, your stomach has the ability to expand to almost six to seven liters. I'm here with Stephanie Torres, and she has just done something incredible. She took the Monster Lulu Challenge, and she had completed this thing in record time, 12 minutes and 37 seconds. Stephanie Xanadu Torres of Las Cruces, New Mexico, died last Tuesday, September 29th. She is being remembered by her colleagues in the world of competitive eating. Stephanie was ranked sixth in the world at the time of her death, according to CompetitiveEaters.com. She lost consciousness as a result of low potassium levels.
Taurus burst on the scene in 2011 at the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest, when she finished second in the women's competition after eating 29 dogs in 10 minutes. However, Taurus was kicked out of Major League Eating, MLE, after she competed in several non-sanctioned events. Takiro Kobayashi, who had also been kicked out of MLE, heard about Taurus and invited her to compete at his Criff Dog Classic in 2012, where she tied for second place with 31 dogs. In June of this year, Taurus went on a competitive eating road trip across the United States. For seven straight days, she competed in one to two food challenges or eating contests a day. Taurus competed in a dumpling contest in New York City just three days before her death. Eating 54 dumplings in two minutes, she won $1,000. Major League Eating declined to comment for this segment and has yet to release a statement on their website. Major League Eating, 75 contests in the continental United States, all around the world. Major League Eating, the fastest growing sport in America. What's up, cuz? How you doing? I'm Steve Monterano. It's my wife, Marsha. Say hello. Hi. The number three ranked eater in the world, Las Vegas' is own Mickey Shooter! Our first meatball eating contest, the champion was Joey Chestnut. Uh, we were excited to have him. I wish he would have came to this one. Joey. This is the home stretch. 30 seconds. This is it. This is what they all came here for, ladies and gentlemen. Three, two, one. That's it. Stop eating. Stop eating. Plates down. Plates down. Let's hear it for him, ladies and gentlemen. In second place, eating an even 14 pounds of pasta. Vicky Sudo! 20 pounds of pasta and gravy. The number one rank in the world, Matthew Stoudy! Took on the championship today, broke, broke the world record, and uh, it, was a, it was a pretty good day. Matthew will make it to us, Stoudy. Did you hear about Stephanie Torres, the girl that died last month after an eating contest? Yeah, about you know about about her death. Um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a horrible situation. It's really unfortunate to hear. I competed with her a few times. She was a great person. Um, you know, unfortunately, just like any other competitive sport out there, there's, there's inherent risks that we take. And uh, you know, I don't know what her regimen was. I, I definitely take a lot of time out and effort to fine tune my regimen, make sure I'm healthy and what we're doing is healthy. And major league eating, they, they hold these contests. They have all the uh, right paramedics and stuff on stage. But uh, it was, yeah, it's really unfortunate to hear about that. The girl that died from the dumpling eating contest. Have you guys heard about that? Yeah. Uh, I didn't know her too well. Uh, well, I just, what do you guys, what do you guys think about that? Do you ever yeah, worry? Well, like, no, no, not at all. Oh, I, not, no, it is. It, that had nothing to do. Nothing with to do the with the contest at all. Um, I mean, she, she had, I. She used to be on the circuit. I, I knew her. I knew that she had some some health stuff ongoing since years ago. It's it's like asking, are you afraid of being human? Because there's there's all kinds of yeah. Stuff no, I, I, I yeah, I have like super mixed feelings. Of course, like my 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 heart goes out to her family and her friends and all that. I met her once, but um, it had nothing to do with competitive eating. And I just have my physical, and this girl can vouch for it. I had like the best results ever. So uh, yeah, I'm in the best shape of my life. Uh, back to Stephanie, though. Yeah, uh, sorry. I, I I like to make things about myself. Apparently. No, she. It, it's a sensitive <laughs> subject, and no, it, it, it is. It's human nature to try to yeah. try to avoid talking about it. But yeah. she was a cool person. She was when she was in MLE, we we hung out, we got to know each other. But it's it's weird because we are a really close family in Major League Eating. But once you leave, we never see you. It's like that relative who moved to the East Coast and doesn't come to Christmas. So. Even if you never came to my Christmas, I'd, I'd still love you forever. Yeah, I know. Um, I mean, so so there's that loss and there's that miss, but I feel like the Major League Eating world would be rocked more had she been currently competing with us, because then that's a yeah. hole in your family that's no longer there. It never, like, crosses your mind, you know, what if something happens, or Why that no. contest didn't change or how it on No, because that wasn't, no, she didn't she, die at a dumpling contest, she didn't die immediately after. It was just a product of, of life. I don't think that the dumplings had anything to do with it, because she, she didn't eat the most dumplings at the contest and everyone else survived so I I, I'm gonna sound incredibly insensitive so I'm probably gonna knock it open my mouth but that's like saying like I ate three bananas today and I croaked oh bananas are the cause of my death like that, that has nothing to do like I don't I don't feel like competitive eating had anything to do with her death I don't know but that's my thought and you can put that on, on 
on record. <laughs> Pops? Sure. I don't even know why they're interviewing me. It's fuck a crazy world. Six months ago. God. I was... I mean, I've always been a little bit of a head case, but uh, I was definitely a serious head case then. What are you famous for? I do eating contests. What? Eating contests. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. I never knew that. Do you know I'm me? I'm Joey. Yeah, I'm Joey. Oh, Joey <laughs> I think I've met you before. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've met you, fucker. I guess I'm getting old. <laughs> I'm getting fat. <laughs> I had a pretty shitty year last year. 2015 was garbage. Personal life sucked. I was supposed to get married. Yes. Calling off the wedding, 10 days before the wedding. And that was like six weeks before 4th of July. Everyone was asking me, oh, are you guys married yet? And I had to tell everybody, no, we broke up. And it was constant, constant, constant. It was a new line of questioning I never prepared myself for. Answer the same fucking questions over and over again. And it was embarrassing. So I took some time off. I needed to. And it, it took me a while to get my head right. Yeah, we're all pretty proud of you here in, in town, you know? Who would have thought for eating? Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. I mean, it's, a, it's something, I mean, that, that people actually get together and watch it. Yeah. I went in and I, I lost, and I've got to live with it. I have to come back and do it. Matt Stoney, he's a great eater. He's definitely making me think about my future and what I have to do to get uh, get back to my being my best. Last month I was in Indianapolis eating shrimp. Shrimp? I think I might give you a challenge on that. Everybody thinks they can, <laughs> but after after two minutes they slow down. Yeah. And I keep going. Losing a big event, especially one that you know you can win and everybody knows you can win, it creates doubt, and doubt's not good at all. That's uh, yeah. Having my head in the right place is, is a big deal for me. You got this. There we go, there we go. Keep working, keep working, keep working, let's go. I knew going into the contest I wasn't at my best. It's like, oh my god, what is it going to take to get back to my best? How, how long will it take? Will I ever get back? I know what I did last time. There's no reason why I can't do that. I need to go a little bit farther. Let's go. Take a deep go breath. Just go. No push. Do you have a lot of frustration towards Matt Stoney? No, I have no frustration. No, I'm a. Uh... He's got a minute and a half. Right minute and a half left. Let's go strong. Let's go strong. Last minute and a half. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Truth is, I wasn't focused. Went in heavy. All the contests I've lost in the last year, I deserve to lose. I didn't deserve to win them. One minute. Come on, Which come on, Joe. You need to push it. Like, you need to push it hard this last minute. Let's go. I'm not frustrated with Matt Stoney at all. I, I, I think he's, he's great. Three, two, one. There it is. Joey Chestnut. Are you going to kick ass again next year? Fourth of July. I'll be ready. I'll get my shit together and I'll be happy. I'm excited to start training for an event. It's time to start pushing myself. This is what I do. Wow. And I'm seven. with the winner of the Mustard yeah. Belt at Pony Island. <laughs>
name's Phil Luminati, also known as Phil the Abyss Ferdin, and this is what I do when I'm not doing anything important. I honestly do not have a passion for competitive eating. I just do it to break up the monotony, you know. It's kind of ironic that we're here at a Christian festival doing this. There's nothing Christ-like about turning God's creatures into hot dogs or wasting food on stage in a public display of gluttony, which last time I checked was one of the seven deadly sins. Can't you tell how, how amped up I am about eating hot dogs? Hot dogs for Jesus. 247! So what do you do for a living, uh, Bill? I'm a human test subject. I take uh, medications that need to be tested for various reasons to get FDA approval. I get paid for doing that, and then I go blow my money in Vegas. Go, 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 go. This is kind of a departure for me. I have absolutely no idea how many hot dogs I'm going to be able to uh, eat. Any uh, ballpark estimate? Why, are they ballpark franks? I wanted the Hebrew National, or would that be a conflict of interest? Do you have a message for all the kids out there that want to do this in the future? You know, just uh, train hard, stay in school, and uh, when you start to look in the mirror and think you're fatter than the other kids in school, you can develop bulimia, and then you're halfway to being a competitive eating champion. I think almost all the eaters honestly know everybody, either independent or MLE. We pretty much know, if, if you're decent, you know each other. Nikki, she's my best friend. Uh, I know Joey. I know the whole field, actually. So, I, I mean, literally, everybody that ate, I pretty much know them, so. Do you have good relationships with all of them, or? Uh, most of all, you know, Mickey, I love her to death. Uh, some of the other people, not so much. Others, a couple that I have distaste for, but I mean, you know. Like, which, which, which ones? I, you know, if there's one, it'd, it'd be probably one more bite. Um, yeah. Merry Christmas, everybody. From the one and only one more bite. There was a, a situation last year we were doing a Secret Santa for Christmas where you sent a challenge in the mail. Hi, Cardboard Shell here for Secret Santa Competitive Eating Collaboration 2014. I got my Secret Santa gift in the mail. I'm a little bit nervous about this. What's good? I'm Eric Badlands Booker and I'm about to devour whatever is in this box. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! We had Secret Santa and I got conned into this. Collaboration, I am ecstatic if you cannot obviously see the joy in my face. I happen to have said package right here. You know, just like a normal Secret Santa, you're gonna send me some sh crazy shit to eat, I'm gonna send you crazy shit to eat. And we're gonna have fun with it. Chum mackerel. Oh my god, chicken of the sea, a pig's feet. Tamarind syrup. Another tamarind syrup. Kool Aid. Preserved boas snakehead fish in brine. Ooh. And basically, you're supposed to be on camera, the camera's running, and you uh, basically eat it on camera. You don't walk away, you don't do it later. You open it, open the box, and here you go. Here's your challenge, do it. <sighs> oh. Dear God. <laughs> well, 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 Merry Xmas Molly. Before you lie, some of the finest items Chinatown has to offer. All I ask is that you enjoy them properly. By that I mean no blending. Enjoy every bite down to the last one. Be sure to kiss the family beforehand because I'm almost certain no one will come close to your mouth after. Love always one more bite. Oh, the joy in my face. I'm just loving this. Century egg. Fish sauce. 
black soy drink. Look at that. Yeah. All right, this. I don't know about that. Knowing that Molly likes to say she could eat anything and everything, I have took it as I'm like I'm gonna play a little joke on her. Here's some lie, you know, like how you, you know, like you know what lie is, you know, like yeah. Like the chemical. yeah. Well, I didn't know what it was, and I I've, I've eaten Ludafis before, and so I knew that it was edible somehow. Although I don't think I can stomach most of the stuff in the first place. Google that real quick and see if you should be drinking that. But let's try the rest of this real quick. That's gone. Now, if you've Googled this, lye water, we're not gonna drink that. That's a very bad thing. It's actually a poison. I called a friend, I was like, what is this? I'm like, that's poison. It's not drinkable or edible. He sent me poison in the mail to drink. I was like, that rat bastard. <laughs> so, I'm gonna consider my challenge complete. And thank you for the Christmas gift. And uh, I almost drank it, so he probably pretty much basically sent something to kill me. So. Hey, if it's at the Asian market, it's for sale. And that's I didn't go out of my way. I didn't go. I didn't do anything illegal. It was a joke that she took way too fucking serious. He may be extremely nice looking on the outside, but inside, I think he's the ugliest of all. So. I I he's a not nice person. He's very about himself. On the topic of Nathan's, I think this whole thing is disgusting. I would probably be up there with them if I could develop bulimia, but I just really don't like the idea of making myself vomit. So that's why I was never able to take this particular career to the next level. That's, that's, that's just the shit that's on the slaughterhouse floor, man. It's like the, uh, the slurry that goes into Chicken McNuggets. You know, I don't give a fuck if it's kosher. That's not, not food that's fit for human consumption. The contestants, you know, they would all kill themselves to be there. That's public validation. I like validation, that's why I came to New York. I like having people point a camera at me even though I'm not doing anything worth filming. And if you can get paid for shit like that, why the hell not? Talking to me? I mean, hot dog is just such a general fucking term. It's like, what, what, what is a hot dog? What part of what animal is going into this, and how are these animals being treated? Do so you side with the animal rights activists that protest the Nathan's contest? No, I didn't even know anyone was protesting the contest, but hey, good for them. They have my moral support if that's what they're doing. Hopefully they're, uh, you know, throwing ketchup on the contestants or something cool like that. Oh, 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 oh. Max Doty on seven. Joey Chestnut on his 11th hot dog. Joey Chestnut is eating hot dogs faster than I can count. Joey Chestnut is on his 13th hot dog. Max Doty is on nine. Max Doty is on ten. We're less than a minute now. A minute into the contest. Maybe I should go protest as long as I'm here. You know, that would be more my style than standing in the audience just you know, just applauding. So Phil, Phil with the line for 75 wins, advancing on to the nice. finals. 75 wins. 75 wins. All right. All right, Las Vegas Swing Bowl. Yeah, second place to Mickey Sudo. What was it like to get second place to Mickey Sudo? I've met a lot of professional competitive eaters. I'd have to say they were all douchebags, but you know, the one that I really dislike the most would have to be Mickey Sudo. 
I would say she's a pretty good fit for Major League Eating. She's got a great backstory. You know, she was arrested, would have gone to federal prison if she wasn't rich and had a good lawyer. What do you mean she got arrested? Well, apparently Mickey Sudo's ex-boyfriend tried to escape and uh, used one of her credit cards to do it. She... Escape what? Oh, from her. What, can you blame him? You met her, you talked to her. I don't think I came near that number, but I'm still proud of my performance. You know, I've had kind of a rough week leading up to this event. Um, just a lot of life hiccups. And uh, so I felt really underprepared and under practice coming to this. Anyway. Tried to escape from her? Yes, yes, man. He didn't, he didn't want to be with her anymore. So anyway, he's trying to go to Tucson or whatever, and she's trying to have him stopped at the airport, and she tells them that, you know, there's a bomb on the plane. You know, that came back to bite her in the ass, and they, they tried to arrest her, and, you know, she gets probation and uh, landed on her feet, you know. Now she's uh, she's a big star doing what, the, what, what she does best other than calling in bomb threats. It's like, yeah, she's kind of hot right now, but, you know, all those hot dogs are going to catch up to her someday. Either that or she's going she's gonna to die of, you know, electrolyte imbalance or something like that other girl did. But they always kind of sweep that under the carpet. What do you say to people who say, oh, it's disgusting? It's competitive eating, not competitive prettiness. I'm not here for a beauty pageant. Good morning, everybody. One more bite here. It's the morning of Christmas in July. Nathan's famous hot dog eating contest is going on today. When you're one more bite, it's a tough gig. You know, people don't understand how hard it is being this good looking. Sure, I might not win, but guess what? People remember me for my good looks, my phenomenal body. Did I mention I'm going to be on a romance novel cover? Oh, that's true. Hashtag the stable, folks. Check it out. Hashtag the stable. Look for your boy one more bite. But let's put it this way. None of those other schmucks on stage can pull this off. What do you think about Joey eating 73 and a half hot dogs at Qualifier? My God, 73 and a half. See, I'm a, I'm a stony guy. I have been since from the get-go. But Joey's got the eye of the tiger. He's just got the look. I think Chestnut is ready. I mean, he's really hungry and focused. He did 73 in the exhibition, so, you know, no one's ever made the 70 mark. Joey does have a lot more to lose today than Stoney, but Stoney looks too relaxed and too calm. Joey looks like he wants to rip Stoney's head off, and I think it's gonna show today. I think this year's results are gonna be really close for first and second place. I do think Joey Chestnut has the edge on Matt Stoney this year. I think you'll see Joey going over 70 hot dogs on buns. Projection on today, it's gonna to be a tough one because both eaters are really, really good, but I would say Chestnut for the win. Stoney was the hunter last year. Now this year, he's just, he's the defending champ and just hanging back, and I don't, I don't know if he knows mentally how to handle that. Where Joey does, Joey's been on both ends. Before he won his first one, obviously he lost a couple times. And then, you know, then defended it for seven straight years. So I got to still put the advantage in Joey's corner, even though he does have a lot more to lose. And I think he knows that. And then that's going to make him even hungrier than Stoney would be today. Like physically hungrier or hungrier to win? Hungrier to win. I think so. Sorry, Stoney. Respect. <laughs>
It's the 100th anniversary, and we are underway. Chestnut already to 10. Stoney three behind him. Joey must have retooled his game as he promised and picked up his pace a little bit. Oh, it's a blistering pace that he's running right now. Just past the minute gone, he's 16 dogs into it. 10.1 dogs per minute for Chestnut. Matt Stoney and Joey Chestnut just evenly matched guys, and they're going to have a dog fight here today. But Chestnut really laying the hammer down right now. But look at the lead. Eight dogs over Stoney. Five minutes and 47 seconds to go in the contest. Chestnut is running away. Four minutes, 30 left to go. If Stoney's going to do anything, now is the moment. He's got to pick his game up. 47 for Chestnut. Just under two minutes now. Minute 54, Chestnut ahead. 60 dogs right now. He's approaching what was last year's winning number, which was 62. Stoney, he's not in the game as we go into the final seconds of this competition. And he's averaging still 7.1 dogs per minute. Can he get to the record? Can he get past it? Is he going to get anywhere near 70? 20 seconds to go. Stoney's not in the game. It's all about Chestnut. It's all about the mustard belt, and it's all about the record now. 10 seconds to go. He's got to get that one down. There we go with 69. Final second. He got it. And he got 70. The most he hot dogs. 70. The most hot dogs ever eaten in the corner of Surf and Stillwell Avenues by the greatest eater in the history of mankind. ま、<笑> MLEが そうすると、例えばはい、上位チェスナッツが今年勝ちました。勝ったけど、エメリーがオーガナイズしてる大会で、エメリーがマネージメントしてる上位チェスナッツが勝った時って、エメリーが勝たせたんじゃないっていうふ
You know, okay, wait a minute. Woo, honey. So Joey ate 70 today. Now he just ate almost 30 in three minutes. How much would he have been able to eat in 10 minutes? He would have slashed him. You know, like he would have slayed. And so what we're asking Chestnut is, if he ate 70, amazing. That means you've finally beaten Kobe's record. But it, but I don't ever believe that until he gets away from MLE. And they, how can you be the same guy who throws the competition, manage that each player have exclusive rights over each player, and count the dots? It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. It's not fair. 28 hot dogs. That's a lot. Take them hot dogs home, honey. We got some, 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 some uh, Tupperware. It's really sad. Also, when you're not paying enough to someone that's an annual fee to be able to call yourself exclusive rights over that person, we don't need your annual fee. We're not asking for it. We're asking you for freedom. The contract said he was not allowed to visually be in public with a hot dog. It's a fucking hot dog. Who cares if it's Nathan's or Sabra's or whatever it is? He should be able to do whatever he fucking wants to do if it's not anything to do with Nathan's. Nobody's hurting anybody. Let's take it to the corner with the picnic table and a bunch of hot dogs. Give us Nathan's hot dogs. Give us the two guys. Don't hold Chestnuts. Don't hold Kawashi. Let them go to the corner and let's just see who's the fucking man. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the man. Come on, man. It's also not fair to call it an international Nathan's competition when the only person who's not from America is Kobayashi. It's not international unless you have a lot of people from different countries. Stop fucking calling yourself the international Nathan's hot dog stage. It's not international. It's guys against guys. It's not Japanese against USA. This is an American tradition done in New York. You know what I mean? Like Kobe already said it today. He said they're selling nationalism. I mean, if they want to talk to me as like a Japanese phenomenon, that's cool. But it's not USA against Japan. It's about athletes going against each other. Give it up, you know what I mean? Record setting competitive eater from Maryland has died. Juliet Lee, just 54. She was a longtime member of Major League Eating and the number 17 ranked eater in the world. And she passed away suddenly yesterday. Lee was also one of the first females to compete in the Nathan's famous 4th of July International Hot Dog Eating Contest, where she has always placed among the top finishers. Juliet was uh, very, very slender and in fantastic shape. She did yoga. She, she was a, a fitness enthusiast. And she would get on stage and she would lift her uh, t-shirt just a little to show her tummy with next to all these big huge guys with their big bellies and she would just the crowd would just love it. Juliet was in very good health and, and you know if you think of the number of times that competitive eaters attend contests each year it might be anywhere between three and ten contests a year so it, it is not you know over the course of a year um, an extraordinary addition of calories or, or, or both. Uh, but I'm not a scientist or a doctor, and uh, so I, I don't know any of those things. I just have never heard of any impact like that. I can say that it, it certainly had nothing to do with competitive eating. Everything about Major League Eating is a lie. Everything. Notice how Nathan's has always been obsessed with an American being the top eater? They used to be the International Federation of Competitive Eating. In this championship, which is sanctioned by the International Federation of Competitive Eating, better known as the IFOCE. That changed the company name to Major League Eating. That was no accident. There is nothing greater than the belt, the victory, and the trophy. And even though it wasn't an American who won, it's congratulations. Thank Ladies you Ladies and much. gentlemen, Takeru Kobayashi. They couldn't stand a foreigner beating them on their own soil, especially a Japanese one. Joey Chestnut, unofficially at 71. They just threw him another one, 72 unofficial, which would be a record for the corner surf in Stillwell, 101st running of the Nathan's Famous Hot Dog Contest. And look at that battle uh, for third place between Esper and Stoney. It came in close, just a two-dog difference as Stoney takes third. All of their contests are rigged in Joey's favor. An incredible 64 thrown down by the all-time great, now an 11-time champion, Joey Chestnut, on top again. You just add an empty plate to his pile at the end. It's cheap fucking carnival trick.
Joey, congratulations on your 11th mustard belt. How'd you get it done today? The judges in front of me were all screwed up. They, they couldn't see how, what number I was on. I just I just had to ignore that and just keep eating. Uh, 74 hot dogs. I, I, ooh, man, I, I murdered it. And uh, I was aiming for 75, but at 74, I'm happy. I felt if you looked at the plates proportionally, they weren't the same. But how do you know? <laughs> you got to take somebody else's word for it. It's not like there's uh, some quality control guy in the back. You know, they come as close as they can, but that could be the difference between winning and losing. Only person I ever eat that much, it, other than me, is Kobayashi, and he, he did amazing. And it, well, we don't know the exact number yet, but you just managed to completely outpace the competition. A new world record. 74 Nathan's Famous Hot Dogs at five. These greasy, gelatinous, brainless masses clapping in endless glee with their mouths agape as these freaks chow down on disgusting hot dogs made from the slaughtered bodies of countless helpless animals. And for what? And for what? This is representative of what America has become. It's obsessing over swallowing massive amounts of phalluses on the day of the country's birth. More hot dogs in the mouth. More, more, more. have changed. Today there is no sea of fans to rise above, no carnival-like atmosphere. Surf and Stillwell stands quiet. But we will not stand down, we never have. On this 4th of July we unite in solemn duty to acknowledge those who honor our freedom. While we stand six feet apart, we are together. So it is, and so it always shall be, as we go forth on the 4th of July. Go! And we are underway. The 2020 men's division of the Nathan's Famous Hot Dog Eating Contest. It's been, it's been something else to get this off the ground. Yeah, I think there was a period where to lose Kobayashi as an eater against Joey kind of made it boring because even though... You know, there was nobody really close to Joey at some point. Three, two, one, put down your hot dogs on. Some things change, <laughs> some <laughs> remain the same. 75 hot dogs and buns, a world record. 75 hot dogs and 75. 75. Because it gets boring watching the same person win. seconds remaining 72 hot dogs and buns unofficially he is eyeing his own record look at that crowd reality of this country. My advice, move to equity. The number one ranked eater in the world, Joey Jessica! Joey Chestnut. No, 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 que mamá, estamos en México. 